What's up everybody, Griever here, and today we are going to be taking a look at something I honestly didn't think I would be taking a look at, but you know what? It was available and it was for the right price, so I figured what the hell, and you've already read the uh, description of what this is. But yes, I got a Siren Mauler. So, with all of my reviews, as always, whether I pay for them or not, uh, anything I review on the channel is my own opinion, no matter what, uh, since I've already said I spent my own money on this. But we're going to go over everything as we always do. We're going to go over um, what this is, how it works, the aesthetics of the blaster, take it over to the workbench to see what's inside of this, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on it. So, what is the Siren Mauler? Well, Siren is the brand, Mauler is the particular blaster. Uh, there are three in the line so far. One is the Mauler itself. Uh, there is also a pistol and there's also a flywheel blaster. I do not remember the names or want to attempt the pronunciation of them, so they're just going to go right here. So, the gimmick behind Siren Blasters is they're not just another uh, competition half dart bla uh, grade uh, blaster these are I'm not going to say programmable but they're adjustable power blasters so if you see right here on front it has this little kind of switch thing uh, that is where that is like the whole thing behind the siren while it's all the way up here you are on the lightest setting middle and then heaviest is basically the power you're getting out of this on the lightest setting, I think you're supposed to be getting about 130 to 140 out of it. The middle setting, about 150, 160. And then at the heaviest setting, you're supposed to be getting about 190, 200 FPS coming out of this thing. So that's the kind of gimmick behind this thing. So let's just get into what the Mauler is itself. Uh, the Mauler is a pump action Springer bullpup blaster magazine goes in the back here to prime it you just pull on the front grip like this push it forward there is no spring assisted return pull the trigger and fire does actually have a pretty decent seal um, the stock on this thing is fixed but it does have a curve so it does it is supposed to fit into your shoulder very nice and comfortably you have your primary grip here oh sorry Magazine well back here. You just have a little button right here to uh, release your magazine, which isn't terrible uh, You have your main grip here your pump action priming grip up here. The color scheme actually isn't terrible uh, I dig the black and the white. This is not a terrible green. I kind of like this green. It's pretty okay uh all of the detailing or decaling I should say uh, so the siren logo the name here and also your little warning at excuse me of do not fire at objects closer than 25 feet are all painted on so if you decide to uh, do this up in a custom color uh, scheme easily sandable no problem uh, it does look like all of the panels and parts are separate are separating so the front piece here you can just take out uh, these black and white panels look like they will separate off which is actually pretty nice so it should make painting a little easier but we'll see that when we get to the workbench itself uh, this comes with one 10 round magazine that you just put back in there does not gravity drop but on the plus side is Talon compatible so you don't have to worry about just getting a bunch of 10 10 round clips we can use towns no problem now one thing I did want to point out because uh, I mean really the basics of this is exactly what you see is what you get oh for Picatinny rail though the top this is all that you get is just this front portion right here uh, it does come with a I want to say this is a ghost ring sight. It also does come with a ring sight on the back. However, that snaps into place. I did not do that on this because 
I don't know how difficult it is going to be trying to get that thing off, and I'd rather not fight with it while I'm trying to open it up to get to record the internals of this thing, so I just left it off for the time being. Um, it also does come with 10 darts, but the darts are interesting. These are the siren darts. Now, why I say these are interesting is because these are not your standard half-length foam darts. This particular foam is the same foam used for ultra darts. So it is that um, polystyrene, like closed foam, like packaging foam that they use. And we'll get more into that later on in the uh, in the final thoughts on it because I have thoughts about these darts. Uh, but funny enough, these only come with the Springer Blasters. Uh, this and the pistol are the ones that come with this. The Flywheel Blaster that Siren made actually comes with regular standard darts. Uh, or I shouldn't say standard darts, but normal half-length darts. So yeah, that's the overview of the Mauler. Let's go to the workbench and open this thing up, see how this actually works, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on this thing. Okay, so we're at the workbench. I have this thing um, completely unscrewed and open. I'm just, you know, have this over to, you know, savor the internal so we're not just jumping right into it. But a couple of things I wanted to point out first off. Uh, one, while this does look like it is a separate piece, you do still have to unscrew the um, orange section up here. Uh, the front of this has this orange ring that snaps onto the front of it. The easiest way I got that off without trying to pry it off with a flathead was I just unscrewed the entire body and started from the back and just kind of open, tried to butterfly it and it worked. Um, there are two hidden screws behind this black panel back here so if you're going to open it up you do have to pry this piece off which i was not that thrilled in doing um the other thing is and this i was saving mainly for the final thoughts on it because in regards to ergonomics uh ergonomic choices this grip is on the small side figuring okay most of them put picatinny underneath there we can put an angled foregrip we can get bigger grips or whatever nope we will have to 3d print replacement grips and they will have to be standard vertical grips because it just has a vertical bar here and not actual picatinny yay so moving on to the inside of the blaster these i will say are some of the neatest most self-contained internals i have seen ever um you have your trigger right here which connects to the catch which is all screwed in here to the priming rod and your plunger and your spring and every and plunger tube here and everything here is your return for your for the actual airflow uh this just it doesn't even go through the piece that pushes the dart in that just literally moves back pushes the dart in and then just seals it up which is fabulous uh you have your barrel here which i gotta say is actually a pretty good length barrel and then you have your front piece here which actually keeps the barrel in place but it also as i had mentioned earlier does not lend to being very helpful in allowing the use of b cars or scar barrels uh Looking at the opposite side of the shell, you can see a lot of snaps and also you can see a lot of screws as well. So the shell definitely separates out a lot. Like looking at the front here, like this entire upper green piece actually comes out. So you could actually come up with some really, really wild color combinations for this thing. Uh, and honestly, that does sound like it could be some fun with this, but yeah, internally, 
everything is self-contained. So if you wanted to swap a spring out or anything like that, you would have to take apart this entire assembly here, which I am not doing at this uh, point because, I mean, this thing functions very well and it does, I mean, using darts, it does what it says it does where you have the adjustable power um, settings. But like, this is, this is it. And I will be a hundred percent honest. I don't understand how this works because it literally is just something that slides across the priming bar. And for the life of me, I just can't figure out right now, uh, looking at it, how this actually affects the prime. Like, I really don't. Um, yeah, I, I don't understand how this is supposed to adjust the power settings, but it does. Um, I think what it is, it's supposed to be a stop for this. So it, chances are in here with the plunger is an adjustable or a, um, I guess an adjustable catch or something. And this is what stops it from going back so far or whatever. So I uh, might play around with this a little bit after this and before I give my final thoughts to see if maybe I can, if I have it at the lightest, at the heaviest setting, to see if I can kind of prime it to a point of where I get like a 130 or a 150 shot. I might do that. But yeah, this is the internals of the Mauler. Not very complicated. Everything is self-contained, which is nice, like I said. So if you remove everything to do any kind of painting, it shouldn't be that difficult to put back together. So having said that, I am probably going to have great difficulty putting this stupid thing back together for whatever godforsaken reason. But I'm going to close this thing up and I'm going to give you my final thoughts on this thing. Okay, so my final thoughts on the Mauler. Um, I got some good ones, I got some bad ones, but first off, I figured out how this thing actually works. It is actually just a prime stop. Uh, there is, I'm safely assuming, a staged uh, catch system built into the way this primes, because if you prime it back just this far, you can see almost right there, that's where it kind of stops it at. Um, if you push it all the way to the back, you can get it to like catch at the increments from where it's doing, the, where it's like staged would be. So, so there, that's basically how the power system works. It just basically kind of stops you from priming a staged catch system. If you wanted to, you could just take that whole thing out um, and just figure out how to prime it the way you want it or just take it out completely and just have a high-powered blaster. So, on to my final thoughts of this thing. Like I said, there are things that I liked about it, things I don't. The one thing I really hate about this thing is the ergonomics of it. Um, the fixed stock is fine because where it's at is... It's a comfortable position. I would have liked a little bit longer, but for the average person, this is not terrible. Um, the grips, however, are not good, um, or at least in my opinion, they are not good. This grip right here, as everyone has, I'm sure plenty of people have mentioned, very blocky, very uncomfortable to hold. Like, if I hold it, if my hand is straight, this is basically the angle that I have to have my hand at in order to feel comfortable holding this. Like if I just hold it straight on, it's too thick back here. Like you can see here where it has like that nice little contour for your hand. If they just brought that and wrapped it around here, it would have been perfectly fine. Um, the grip itself, again, very blocky. You can even see it's just a square. Uh, could have used much more contouring to make it better. 
I really don't know how we would fix this other than maybe chopping it off and just 3D printing on something that screws over it. But yeah, over and all, I'm not a fan of that grip. But I'm also not a fan of the, of the priming grip either. Uh, as we saw when we opened this thing up, there's no Picatinny rail underneath here. It is literally just a solid bar that this goes over. And I don't like that because this grip, as you can just see, my hand is way bigger than what it would be. And yeah, I can kind of fit three fingers on it, but fitting three fingers on this is very uncomfortable. I would like, it's more like two and a half fingers for me, which I'm not a fan of. The, the fact that this has very short Picatinny rail and not full is another downside on it because you can put a red dot up here, but it's very, it'd be a very far forward red dot. Like you couldn't set it back here. Um, and I mean, like, let's be honest, this thing is definitely not going to be a scout rifle. But then again, I mean, with, at the highest setting, I mean, it could be all right. Um, but yeah, ergonomically, this thing is a mess. And I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I do appreciate the ingenuity behind this. Um, while I was trying to figure out how complex they could make it, it was actually stupid simple where it's just a, it's a stopgap. It just basically stops you from priming it back further. So it's making you catch either that first, second or third catch, which I got to say is not bad. I like the fact that also, the shell can come apart in so many different ways. Um, I do not like the fact how the shell is manufactured because, I mean, there's like way to it. But the reason for that is all the panels and all the additional screws inside of this thing. I hate the fact that they have hidden screws in here. In this day and age, with modifying blasters and making something for the hobby or a competition, to the fact that you have hidden screws in there, that is not cool I do not appreciate that at all um, the fact that it is talent compatible is great because let's face it 10 dart magazines ain't cutting it when the standard talent is 15 I mean granted darts on still makes 12 round clips but X shot makes 15 round clips they can do 15 round clips and like I said it totally works and it's fine and I appreciate that um, now getting into the darts that this thing comes with I do not like these one I was never a fan of the ultra dart to begin with some people sing its praises saying oh it was great innovation you don't get they don't get crushed or whatever no if these things get crushed they're they're designed to where if they get crushed yeah, you're weakening them to like basically be like a normal dart. So, like, yeah, oh, you have the rigidity here and all, but again, somebody steps on it or whatever, they get a little mushed, and you have like the strength of a normal dart. So, I don't know what the big payoff is because I mean, darts are going to get stepped on. Uh, the other thing is the construction of this is kind of not on the best quality side. Uh, just looking at these two, and I'll have overlay over this, but like the darts, you can see the glue. You can see the glue up on these things. Like, what is this? Like, you know, worker darts from like seven, eight years ago? Like, we can, like, they can do way better than this, but like, you can see the glue up. It's not that great. I mean, the tips of the darts are fine. Um, but yeah, the fact that there's like glue on these things and the particular foam that they chose, not a big fan of that. Um, and the fact that like some, most of the hobby darts will work with this is good. Um, the fact that I was having issues with some of them ain't that great, especially since outside of bamboo 2.16, whatever, um, the majority of my darts are ember dart, are uh, the red striker darts. So, if they have trouble in this thing, I, I don't know what to say for that point, but... Um, last thing I want to mention about this is pricing. Now, I said I got this at a reasonable and understandable price. 
Uh, on Target, I believe this thing was 30 bucks. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this was like $30 on Target. Maybe 40 I have to double check, but... I mean, price-wise, it's not bad if you want to kind of mess around with it, and if you need something that needs to vary between, uh, like, FPS and all that stuff, I mean, this is at least an idea to go with. But truthfully, if you want a competition blaster for, like, the price of this, that would cause something like this, honestly, I wouldn't recommend this. I would recommend the X-Shot Long Shot. Uh, it's still 30 bucks. Yes, there are problems with the uh, plunger tube. I don't know if those have been addressed or not, but I mean, to be perfectly honest, a $10 replacement plunger tube fixes that problem, no, no worries. So if I'm correct on this and this is $40, that's a $30 blaster with a $10 part you need to make it, you know, completely 100% reliable, there you go. Uh, but yeah, truthfully, and just even ergonomically and everything, I like the long shot. I like that long shot better. Uh, you do have an adjustable socks stock, so you can, you know, it's not like a massively adjustable stock, but you can do that. You can change out the front grip, no problem. Uh, there are plenty of parts out there already for it. Uh, while this is new to market, I'm sure somebody is going to come up with stuff for it. Uh, but over and all, at least for now, it's okay, but it's not something I'm going to say yes, get. Yeah. Um, between this and other options, I would honestly probably go with other options. But that's where we're going to take it for this video. And as always, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of Siren. and. What are your unbiased thoughts upon them? Let me know down in the comments below. I love reading them. And, ooh, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. And don't forget, we do have the P.O. Box. Snail mail is a lost art. Love getting letters, not junk. Junk is junk. But, again, thank you for joining us. And I will see you guys next time. Later.